We're here on final hearing. Ms. Schulte is with us for the department. Uh, Casa is with us. Mr. Pirtle is with us representing the child. Mr. Jackson is with us representing the father. Mr. White Wolf, who is with us. Mr. Barfield is with us representing the mother. Ms. Sarmiento, who is with us. Okay, that accounts for all parties. I have no one in the waiting room. So where do we stand? Are we ready to proceed, Ms. Schulte? Yes, Judge. Okay, all right. Your, your Honor, I'd like to make an announcement that may may or may not simplify things. I think it will. Uh, in the breakout room I discussed with my client, we received earlier proposal from the department as to a resolution of this case. Um, I also spoke with Mr. Jackson prior to the hearing and, of course, my client, uh, which was what we had in the breakout room. I believe that we are in agreement uh, at this point, unless something has changed since I got the email January 20th. Uh, I believe we're in agreement with the recommendation of the department uh, uh, that uh, dad be named uh, co-managing, my client be named possessory uh, with uh, minimum child support, medical support uh, paid um, and and uh, visitation uh, supervised as agreed by the parties, uh, by either by dad or his designee. Uh, with, uh, I believe Mr. Jackson indicated he's going to be requesting a name change for the child. Um, uh, although uh, I don't believe we'd like to keep the child's last name as it is. However, based upon the circumstances and, and also the tribal affiliations, I don't believe we would have any, any opposition to a name change as well. Um, I don't think there's any other issues that I'm missing. Uh, but again, I, I think we would be in agreement with that if that may speed things up today all right okay so uh let's just mr jackson do you need a breakout room with your client to discuss this no sir judge i spoke with him this morning before the hearing okay all right so what is your client in agreement yes sir all right uh miss schulte is the department in agreement yes the department's in agreement with that i spoke to mr jackson this morning um, I do want to clarify what has been discussed between Mr. Barfield and Mr. Jackson regarding um, what minimum child and medical support looks like, just so that I know what to put in the order when I draft it. Okay, and I guess that would depend. What you're saying is you need to know whether or not Ms. Sarmiento has any other children that she's supporting? <laughs> Um, I don't believe she does, but I I believe what I had proposed would have been based on minimum wage. I didn't know if they had discussed a deviation from guideline support. No, ma'am. Okay. Whatever the minimum wage guidelines are set for in the state of Texas is all is what Mr. Jackson and I, I believe, are in agreement for. Okay. Okay. Then I believe, I believe that we are in agreement with all of those terms as well. All right. And just so everyone will be on the same page, uh, this court, when I set medical support, it's $35 a month. Judge, so, if I may, uh, uh, my client, uh, Mr. White Wolf, he's a resident of Oklahoma. And uh, he is, uh, when, when all this is said and done, he, he intends on putting the child on sooner care there in Oklahoma. And he had informed me earlier this morning that there there is no cost to them for sooner care. Okay. If that's the case, then I will, I'll uh, be happy to just not set medical support. If it becomes an issue later, then the parties can go back to court if that becomes a, a, a necessary issue. And the only other issue that I guess that we have, I really haven't discussed with anybody else, is that we need to, Mr. White Wolf needs to obtain uh, the child's birth certificate for purposes of putting that child on center care. Okay. And the, who has that? St. Francis Department? Mom? Who has a birth certificate? I do not have a copy of the birth certificate, but I have requested it several weeks, well, probably a month or so back from DFPS. I can follow up on that. Okay, thank you. The judge, if I may, um, this is Tessa Lenwolf, and we may be able to get him a copy for temporary, um, temporarily from our enrollment office as well. Okay, that works great. Okay, let me just, I'm making a couple of notes here, then I will announce what I understand the agreement is, and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I I will approve the agreement that, oh, I'm sorry, I have not asked. Casa, Casa, are you in agreement with this? Yes, sir. All right. And Ms. Lone Wolf, is, uh, is the Wichita tribe in agreement? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I'll announce what I believe it is, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I will approve that agreement. I will name uh, Mr. White Wolf as 
permanent managing conservator of the child with the right to designate the child's residence. I'll name Ms. Sarmiento permanent possessory conservator. I will uh, order Ms. Sarmiento's child support be set based on Texas minimum wage. I will not set any medical support as the father intends to uh, have the child on sooner care at no cost. Uh, I do believe it's in the best interest of the child uh, that the child's last name be changed. Uh, Ms. Sarmiento's visitation will be as agreed to by the parties, meaning the father and the mother. And this 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 next part I'm adding because I have to under Texas law. If the parties can't agree to visitation, then Miss Sarmiento will have one hour per month supervised by either Mr. White Wolf or anyone that Mr. White Wolf designates. Uh, I'm sure y'all will work it out, but I have to have something in there in case you can't work it out. So, um, all right. And based on that, then the department and all court ordered relationships will be dismissed after all appellate and de novo periods have expired. Now, as I've announced, uh, have I left anything out? Not that I can think of, Your Honor. Okay. No, All, right. Sir, not that I'm All right, then I will approve that agreement. I appreciate y'all working this out. As we've got a final resolution in this case, there will be no further hearing set. So we will stand in recess. Everyone have uh, a good Mr. rest Alley's of the week. with us for the department. And for Mr. Pertle is with us representing the child. Ms. Kincaid is with us representing the mother, Ms. Graham, who is with us. And Mr. Hill, the father, is not with us. I have Haley Grissom in the waiting room. Your Honor, I think he may be here. I think that he's under the CASA name, maybe. Oh, okay. Under Brandy Coberly? That's my guess. Maybe if he can unmute and confirm that. Uh, Mr. Is that, are you Mr. Hill? If you'd unmute, please. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Are you Mr. Hill? Yeah, I don't know. I'm under somebody else's name. Uh, okay. That's all right. We know you're here. So, all right. That's everyone. Is Haley Grissom your witness, Mr. Alley? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Let's get her in. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would call Miss Haley Grissom. Where is All he right. currently placed? He is in a group home in Houston. And how long has he been in that placement? Since December 8th of 23. And um, how's he doing in that placement? Um, he's doing okay. He got off to a rough start, but um, he he's doing better. He settled down. Uh, they got him in a different school, an alternative school. That seems to be helping. So it started off rough, but he's doing better. Is that current placement meeting all of his needs at this time? Yes. Are they making sure that he's attending all of his medical and mental health appointments? Yes, sir. Is he going to counseling at this time? Yes. Um, his mother is Miss Casey Graham. Yes, sir. She was uh, ordered to work some services. Has she begun working services uh, under the order? Yes, she is getting started. Um, we've gone over her family plan together, and she's contacted the the counselor that I referred her to. And, and and I apologize. This is the hearing where we're trying to get her ordered to work services. Did you sit down with Miss Graham and and work out services that she needs to complete in this case? Yes, sir. And did she participate in that uh, developing that service plan? Yes. So um, we had a single case plan meeting and then I also went over it with her in person, just one on one. And did she sign the service plan? Yes. And it's on file with the court? Yes, sir. And uh, the child's father is Mr. Ryan Hill. Yes. And have you been in contact with him? Yes, I have. And did you prepare a service plan for him? Yes. And did you go over the services in that service plan for him? Um, I have talked to him on the phone about the specifics of it. And then um, he has an LPS worker also that's supposed to be going over things with him as well. I don't think she's been able to make contact, but I have emailed him his plan as well. But you don't have a signed copy back? Correct. Um, but you outlined the services that you are asking Mr. Hill to complete in our court report? Yes. And are they designed based upon your conversations with Mr. Hill and what the needs of this family are? Yes. Are you asking the court then to approve both Mr. Hill's service plan that you've prepared and Ms. Graham's service plan that she has signed? Yes, sir. In the meantime, uh, there are still behavior concerns from Rylan? Yes. And it would be contrary to his general welfare to return him home to either parent today. Yes. 
and it would be unsafe to do so. Yes, sir. Are you asking the court to continue the department as temporary managing conservator? Yes. And continue his placement, Rylan's placement, in his current uh, home? Yes, sir. And you believe that's in the best interest of Rylan? I do. I'll pass witness, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Ms. Kincaid. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, since our last hearing on this matter, has Rylan absconded from the current placement? Um, he has, he's had one runaway episode in January. He had four during December. Um, he had one, he left placement on the 18th. Well, he actually left school, um, on the 18th and he returned the morning of the 19th. Okay. So would that be the 18th of January to the 19th of January? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Was that when he was in the alternative school or when he was still in the public school? Still in the public school. Okay. Uh, when did he start at the alternative school? Um, just Wednesday, Monday. He got enrolled on in this new school on Monday of this week, so the 29th. Okay. And is that a school that would, um, do they prevent him from being able to just leave campus? We are hoping so. Um, it's a much smaller school size, much smaller, much smaller class size and school size. And, um, there's a lot more one-on-one -on -one parent to or teacher to kid ratio. So we're hoping that these um, he's not just allowed to walk out of school like he has been. Okay. Um, if I recall correctly at the adversary hearing, um, the judge had ordered his placement to an RTC once uh, we were able to arrange transportation. What's changed since then that has made it uh, such that his current placement is, is best for him? So um, what happened after the last court hearing, um, the GRO that he's in had submitted a discharge notice and we had found an RTC for him. Um, and then right when we were trying to get him moved, the GRO rescinded their discharge notice and um, we, we accepted that. St. Francis accepted that the res rescinding of that notice. Um, and Rylan expressed that he wanted to stay there. He said that he kind of realized that what he was doing wasn't good, that he was going to try harder. Um, so that's why the GRO took back that discharge. Um, and through talks with his ad litem and Rylan and his placement, we felt like um, it was better to give him a chance to stay there at his placement and just see if he really could change the behaviors that he was displaying. Okay. And since that time, he has absconded again? Yes, once, yes. Okay, so the hope is that with continued, I guess, behavior change in the new school, hopefully he won't continue to, to run off? Correct. And there's uh, his, Rylan's voiced a couple of reasons as to why he keeps running off. So we're trying to, like, fix those as we figure them out. Um, he's also had a medication review. Um, since I wrote the court report, he had a medication review on the 25th of January. Um, so they're continually trying to adjust those medications, get him in a better place mentally. Um, so we're just, we're, we're hoping that all those things together will help him stay okay. put. Okay. Um, and concerning visitations for mom, um, currently what I've read is that Rowland has expressed a wish not to have visits with his mom. Yeah. So Rowland is refusing all contact with mom. Um, and in talks, I was able to visit with his therapist, um, this past Monday, the 29th, and she has expressed the same thing that he said to her that he does not want any contact with mom right now. And therapist believes that it's best not to push it and just kind of let him work through this with therapy. And then when he's ready, introduce mom through family therapy and they're in their sessions. Okay. And just a, a little bit of housekeeping. I think that I'd seen it reported somewhere that uh, mom was living in a camper. Is that correct? Um, that is, she's not living in a camper to my knowledge. Okay. You've been to her home. Is that correct? I, I've been, I've met with her in person and I've been to her cousin's home. I've met her at her cousin's home where she stays sometimes from what I understand. Okay. Um, but to your knowledge, she doesn't live in a camper or an RV and she, she never has. Is that correct? From what I know, she's never lived in a trailer or a camper. Okay. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. All right. Mr. Pertle. I have no questions. All right. Uh, Ms. Grissom, in reading the CASA report, they uh, were concerned that he was on uh, five psychotropic mm -hmm. medications, but that, that's been reviewed recently. He did see the psychiatrist on January 25th, and I have an updated 
um, list if you want me to give that to you, but he still is on five psychotropic medications. Has he, has he mentioned whether or not he believes they're helping him or if he's over medicated or? He feels like they're helping him. He's been very vocal about speaking up about, okay, I don't think like this one's working. And then they change them, you know, at the next review. So they're making adjustments um, as we go. So, and he's been very vocal. Like one, he felt it was um, making his neck stiff and making him not be able to be alert for class in the morning. Um, So he's speaking up about what they're, what they're doing to him. All right. And I also read from Costa's report that uh, he hadn't had contact with any family members since going into care almost two months ago but that he wanted to talk to his father and to his uh, paternal grandfather. Is that still the case? He has had a phone call with dad and I, I did put dad and grandpa on his call list um, last week. But after talking to the therapist on this past Monday, she does not want that to be the case. Um, she, from information that she got from Rylan, she does not believe that unsupervised contact with dad is a good thing either. Okay, so, so she wants those phone calls to be monitored. So, so basically, may, maybe down the road, family therapy is where we need to go. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right, Mr. Alvey. Any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. We rest. Thank you, Miss Kincaid. Any witnesses? Uh, briefly, I'll call right, Miss Thank Graham. you. Thank you, Judge. Uh, there were just a few things that we wanted to clarify uh, for the court today. One of those being that you do live in a house. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you've always lived in a house. Is that correct? Yes. We've never lived in a camper. Or an RV. Is that correct? No, no RV, no camper. Okay. Always now, a once, house. Well, once upon a time you had plans of renovating like an old school bus and making it a tiny home, but that never came to fruition. Is that correct? I have the bus. I bought it, but it has everything I own inside of it. And that's, it, that's all on hold. Right. But you never had Rylan live in there? No, no, ma'am. It's a school bus. It's not, it's, it hasn't been renovated. Okay. Um, and you did uh, get a copy of your service plan. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I believe so. Okay. Yes, and, I did. And you've begun calling uh, the locations that, that were listed on there so that you can begin to work your services. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. I'll pass witness. All right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Early questions? No questions. Mr. Alvey? No questions, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Kincaid, did you have any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. I'd rest. All right. Mr. Pertle, did you have any witnesses? No witnesses, Judge. All right. And Mr. Hill, you uh, aren't represented by an attorney. Is there anything you need to tell me today, or did you want to testify? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Oh. Um, no, I don't have an attorney. Um, okay. Let, I, let I don't me. know if I'm... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, I don't know if we covered this at the adversary hearing or not. I don't know if you were there, but uh, I still show you as what's called an alleged father that tells me you weren't married to Miss Graham when Ryland was born. Is that the case? Um, I mean, we could do a, a DNA test, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I say I'm his father, whether I'm or not. Well, same with my say, daughter. Did you say you've done a DNA test? No. So we can right. if you want. It doesn't matter. Well. No, that's that's let, let me. That's why I'm asking you this question. So, uh, were you present at the hospital when Rylan was born? Yeah, I signed the birth certificate and everything. Okay, that doesn't matter if you signed the birth certificate. Do you remember? Did any of the staff give you something to sign, which is called an acknowledgement of paternity, where you swore that you were the biological father of Rylan? Uh, probably, probably did. Well, probably doesn't help me. I'm no, I can't ahead. remember that long ago. Well, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just admonish you, uh, Leslie. We haven't found an AOP, have we? No, Your Honor, but I can do a search. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hill, we'll look and see if you did sign one of those. If so, we're good to go. If not, I, I'll go ahead and admonish you now. If we can't find that, then you have the absolute right to paternity testing to prove you are or you're not the biological father of Ryland. Do you understand that? Uh, what do you mean admonishing? What are you going to admonish? What's admonish I'm, I'm, mean? Te I'm telling you, you have the right to a paternity test to prove you are or you're not the father of Ryland. Do you understand that right? Yes, sir. All right. Do you want to exercise that right? Do you want me to order paternity testing or do you want to me? You want to just tell me you are his father and I'm going to go ahead and enter an order that says you're his father. Uh, uh, well, I've raised him his whole life. I might as well be his father. Well, I, I got to have a yes or no, because this is a legal matter. Um, I guess we could do a paternity test if you want to. <laughs> 
All right. One more time. It's not what I want. It's your right. You can, you're the only one that can exercise that right. You can waive it or you can ask me to order paternity testing. You have to be the one to answer that question. Um, tough one. I guess you could just waive it. It'll be fine. Okay. Then I'll go ahead and enter an order today that says that you are the biological father of Ryland. So, okay. Then, um, if no one else has any further witnesses, then Mr. Pertle, any recommendations? Your Honor, I have talked to the child. The child's been expressed a desire to remain where he's at, um, and in his current placement. I wasn't. I didn't know about the school situation, but um, I know the child wishes to remain where he's at. Okay. All right. Good enough. Okay. Then, based on what I've heard today, I will continue the department as temporary manager conservator. Continue Ryland's current placement. I'll order the services for the parents as contained in their service plans. I will order the paternity testing for Mr. Hill and Ryland. Okay. Um, judge, to, judge, just just for my clarification, you or, you went ahead and ordered that we do an adjudication. You went ahead and adjudicated him today. So he we, just said, we wouldn't. He just said he wanted paternity testing. That was the last thing he said. I, no, no, I'm sorry. He did. You're right. <laughs> Never mind. Forget okay. the paternity testing. And based on Mr. Hill's testimony today, I do find that uh, Ryland, Ryan Hill is, in fact, the biological father will establish that parent-child relationship. Sorry about that. Okay, then uh, I need to admonish both parents that the services contained in your service plan become a court order today. At a final hearing, if you haven't worked those services, your parental rights could be altered or terminated. Do you both understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Our next hearing will be the initial permanency hearing. That will be on June 5th, 2024. That will be by Zoom, just like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or so before June 5 to see exactly what time we'll have that hearing. Uh, Mr. Hill, you raised your hand. You have a question? Yeah, someone told me he needed some shoes, so I got him some shoes and some clothes. I wasn't sure if there's any way I could get those to him. Sure. Yeah, you can get with Miss Grissom. Ms. And Grissom? She'll, yeah, she'll figure out a way to, to get that, make that happen. All right. Okay. All right. We'll stand in recess. I'll, I may be a few minutes late on this next hearing, but I'll be back as quickly as I can. Y'all have Thanks. a good rest of your week. Thank right. you. Thank, thank you, uh, Judge. Thank y'all. Uh -huh. We're here on thank you. a permanency hearing. Mr. Albee's with us for the department. Ms. Nelson's with us for CASA. Mr. Harris is with us representing the children. Mr. Michelson is with us representing the father, Mr. Welsh, who I show is incarcerated. And Ms. Kincaid is with us representing the mother, Ms. Welsh, who is with us. I have Tori Cook in the waiting room. Yeah, that's my uh, St. Francis Ministries permanency specialist. Where are they currently placed? They're in a group home in Amarillo. And uh, how long have they been in that placement? Um, since August 8th. And um, is that placement meeting all of their needs at this time? Yes. Are they, is the placement making sure that they meet all of their health, dental, and mental health appointments? Yes. Um any special issues or special needs with either child that we need to bring to the court's attention today? No, sir. Children's mother is Miss Erica Welsh. Yes. And she was ordered to work services through a service plan? Yes. And is she begun working those services? Yes, sir. Has she completed any of those services? Yes, she has completed her counseling, um, rational behavior therapy, and an OSAR assessment. And basically, a third of the way through her parenting. Other than the parenting, are there other services that she needs to complete? No, sir. Um, is she exercising uh, visitation with the children? Yes. And is that in person or is it strictly through Zoom? Um, it's two hours in person weekly. Um, and how have those visits been going? They go very well. Um, Children's dad is um, Mr. Marshall Wells. Yes. And um, is he incarcerated? No, not currently. And have you had contact with him? Yes, I have. And has he, uh, did you discuss services that he was ordered to work? Yes, sir. Has he begun working services? Um, he has not, he is scheduled to do rational behavior therapy tomorrow. Um, he has contacted the family, excuse me, the, um, parenting courses, but they didn't have any that fit his schedule around his work schedule. Um, and I believe that is all he has started so far.
Is it still unsafe to return the children to either parent at this time? At this time, yes. And what are you waiting on for mom before that, before we start considering returning the children? Um, I am waiting on a hair follicle test and then some housing stability to be shown since they are separated, mom and dad. When was, when was the last time that you drug screened uh, either Mr. or Miss Welch? Um, my last, let's see when she went. She just went for me. Um, we're waiting the results. Let's see. The last completed one that I have was on December 14th. And then I'm waiting on results in January. I think it was last week. Let's see. January 25th. And was, was that a hair follicle screen that she did last week? Yes, sir. Um, have you had Mr. Wells uh, drug screen? Um, I've asked him multiple times to go. He showed up at the drug screening place on December 18th, but refused to test. And he has not gone yet. He was supposed to go for me um, a couple weeks ago. Today, would you agree that in, in addition to being to it being unsafe to return either children to either parent, that it would be against the general welfare of either child to return them to their parents? Yes. Are you asking them the court continue the department as temporary managing conservator of both these children? Yes, sir. And continue their current placement? Yes. You believe that's in the children's best interest? Yes, I do. Thank you. I'll pass with you, Sharon. All right. Um, Ms. Cook, um, yeah. Mr. Wells, he's he's only the father to Hudson. Is that correct? Matt, Maddie's father is deceased. That is correct. Okay. All right. And would it be contrary to the welfare of the children to be returned to either parent today? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Ms. Kincaid. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, has Ms. Welsh stayed in contact with you? Yes, she has. Okay. And has she been cooperative in working her services? Yes, she has. Um, has she had reliable transportation to her visits? Um, off and on, but we have made sure she's gotten to the visits. Okay. And so far as her housing stability, um, what are you looking for? Um, since she is split from Marshall, I know that she had moved into an apartment here recently, um, just showing that she has a place for both the kids to return to that would be safe for them. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'll pass the witness. All right. Mr. Michelson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, there was some um, statement in the beginning of the hearing that Marshall was incarcerated. Is he recently released or was that just an error? Um, he was incarcerated at the beginning of the case and then um, I believe again in August. Um, I believe he's been out since um, September. So. Okay, thank you. And has he maintained regular contact with the department? Um, no. Okay. Um, when was the last contact you had with him? Um, I did receive a text from him yesterday. Okay. And can you tell me what the nature of that text was? Um, it was about getting services and then again, asking him to go drug screen for me. Okay. And, um, is he regularly exercising visitation? Um, no, he is not. He states that because of his work, it's hard for him to go to some of the visits. When was the last time he visited? Um, I believe it was a couple weeks back in December or and, maybe early January. Sorry. And I assume his visitation schedule is uh, similar to Mrs. Welsh. Yes, it'll be two hours weekly. Okay. Pass the witness. All right. Mr. Harris. Thank you, Judge. Ms. Cook, do you see any reason to not increase visitation for mom based on her willingness to keep in touch with you and work on her services? I see no problem with that. Um, would you, would it be easier for the children to, um, for the visits to be increased um, hourly or just to add another day? I think we could do either, um, just whatever works for everybody's schedule. Okay. Um, and mom travels to them, is that correct? Yes. If the kids um, don't get transport, then yes, mom comes from Pampa. And all visits with mom have been appropriate? Yes, sir. 
And at this point, Ms. Cook, having the children remain in the group own is in their best interest. Yes. <clears throat> thank you, Judge. Pass away. All right, thank you. Ms. Cook, I noted from the report, your report, that uh, Maddie's on one psychotropic for anxiety and Hudson's on two psychotropics for ADHD and insomnia. Are they being monitored every 30 days? Yes, sir, they are. And has either of those kiddos experienced uh, said anything about their medications, whether they believe they help or don't help? They both believe that they are helping them. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, Mr. Alley, any other witnesses? No other witnesses, Your Honor. We rest. Thank you. Ms. Kincaid, any witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor. Rest. Thank you. Mr. Michelson? No witnesses. We rest. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Witnesses? Your Honor, no witnesses. Just a recommendation. All right. Go ahead. I believe based on the uh, the mother's positive impact and positive movement on her service plan, if uh, if the court would increase her visitation um, moving forward. All right. Thank you. Okay, then I will continue the department's temporary managing conservator, continue the children's current placements. I'll order Mr. Wells to both hair strand and UA drug screen by 4 p.m. today at Care Express. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Does he live in Pampa or Amarillo? Yes, he's in Pampa. Okay, so next step is to where we test in Pampa? Um, I believe they got a prestige. Okay, then I'll order him to both hair strand and UA by 4 p.m. today at prestige. And I will order uh, that Miss Welsh's visitation be increased. I'll let y'all work out what works best for uh, Miss Welsh and for the kiddos as far as increasing those visits. Okay, uh, I'll set a final in this case for May 15th, 2024. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or so before May 15 to see exactly what time we'll have that hearing. Okay, we will stand in recess on this case. For those of you involved, I'll be back here at about 2 o'clock. Texas Family First case. Mr. Albee's with us for the department. Ms. Lucero is with us representing the children. Mr. Adams is with us representing the father, Mr. Odell, who is with us. And Mr. Pirtle is with us representing the mother, Ms. Fisher, who is with us. That accounts for all the parties. I have Karen Bider, Laurie Martinez, and Rachel Baca in the waiting room. And Judge, they're all potential witnesses. I'd ask that you bring them in. But okay. before we begin testimony, Your Honor, if you would allow me and the lawyers to, to discuss the case in the breakout room. Okay. And Judge, we're back. Okay, are we ready to proceed? We are, Your Honor. I believe that we have an announcement that we can make to the court in lieu of any testimony today. Okay, if someone can go ahead and announce your agreement. Thank you, Your Honor. Our, our agreement is that the child will remain where the child is currently placed. And, and I believe there's a PCSP in place for this child with the maternal grandmother. Um, but the parents reside in the same home. The parents are going to work uh, services um, as agreed to by them prior to us coming to court. Basically, those are the services listed in our petition. Okay. All right, then. Um Mr. Pertle, is this your client's agreement? Yes, Judge, it is. All right, thank you. Mr. Adams, is this your client's agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Lucero, are you in agreement? Yes, Your Honor, I am. Okay. All right, then I will uh, approve that agreement. I will grant the department's motion to participate. Uh, I'll order the parents to uh, participate in the services set out in the department's petition. Uh, do you want a compliance hearing, Mr. Alvey? Yes, Your Honor, in 60 days. And and before you leave, Judge, if you'll let my witnesses in here so I can okay. tell them that we did that. Okay. Okay, I believe we have everybody in now. For those of you that were potentially going to testify, okay. motion to participate, the parties have reached an agreement that the parents will work the services as requested by the department, so there'll be no need for any hearings or any testimony today. Okay, then, um, you said 60 days out, Mr. Alvey. I have March 20th. That, that will be sufficient, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Uh, granted the department's motion, ordered the parents to work the services as set out in the department's petition, and we'll have a compliance hearing on March 20th, 2024. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or so in advance of March 20 to see what time we'll actually have that hearing.